Namaste and welcome back to the JavaScript series. I hope in the last class you guys understood what is meant by a program, what is meant by programming, what is meant by a high level language, assembly level language, machine level language, right? I'm not going to go back into it. If you have any doubts, please go and look at the recording once again. But today you must understand that the language which we are here to learn JavaScript is a high level programming language and that is what we human beings type in, right? English like statements. But unfortunately, the computer which has to execute, which is none other than the microprocessor, the chip inside our computer which has to execute this code, can't understand English like language. It understands only binary or ones and zeros or machine level. That is why high level has to be converted into machine level, which means 100% JavaScript code internally is getting converted into machine level, yes or no? Now, how is it getting converted? Now, please try to understand when you go on the internet or when you read some textbooks or refer some blogs or watch any other video, you will see many people say that JavaScript is an interpreted programming language. This statement you will see, JavaScript is an interpreted programming language. What does that mean? Ah, to understand this, first you must understand there are two ways, my dear friends, in which high level can be converted into machine level. There are two ways. One approach is using a process called as compilation. The second approach is using a process called as interpretation. Both ways you can convert. Now, what is the difference? Very important to know. Let's start with compilation. Assume this is a high level program written by a human being. Doesn't matter which language. Okay. Now, obviously, what is a program? Collection of instructions. Let us assume I have some four instructions. Ultimately, who has to execute this is my microprocessor. Microprocessor can understand only machine level. So I should convert it from high level to machine level. How will I do that? Very simple. For that, they have created a software called as the compiler. Now, how does the compiler work? Please understand, in one shot, it will take all the instructions inside your program. All the high level instructions in one shot, it will take. And all the instructions line by line, it will convert it into zeros and ones or machine level. I hope you're able to understand. Once the complete machine level code is available, in one shot it will give it to the microprocessor and the microprocessor has now access to all the instructions in binary. It will execute, you will get your output. So, ultimately, you converted high level to machine level only. This we knew in the last lecture itself, Rohit, you may say, I agree. Now come to the next one, interpretation. See how interpretation works. Same high level program, same microprocessor. Conversion has to happen, but this time I will replace the compiler software with a software called as interpreter. Now see how interpreter works. Interpreter will never take all the instructions in one shot. In fact, it will take only a single instruction inside. That single first instruction, it will convert it into machine level. After converting it, it will give it to the microprocessor. Microprocessor will execute that one single instruction and give you the output. But tell me, does your program have only a single instruction? Definitely not. It has a total of four instructions. And hence, from the microprocessor, again the control comes back to the interpreter. Interpreter now fetches the second instruction, gives it to the, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically converts it into machine level. After converting into machine level, gives it to the microprocessor. Microprocessor will now execute that instruction. And you will see its output on the screen. And then again control comes back to the interpreter. Now it takes the third instruction, converts, executes. Again control comes back to the interpreter, takes the fourth instruction, converts, executes. So clearly you can notice there are some fundamental differences between compilation and interpretation. There are some similarities also. The similarity is very obvious. Both processes and both software ultimately is going to convert your high level into machine level. That is the similarity and you can clearly see it. Now let's speak about the differences which is far more important. First difference is that compiler basically converts your entire high level program into machine level in one shot. One shot conversion from high level to machine level. Understood? But your interpretation process, interpreter converts only one instruction at a time. One instruction at a time, that's it. Second obvious difference is compilation uses a software called as compiler, interpreter uses a software called as interpreter. Now there is one more difference. Now think from the point of view of the microprocessor. 
Now, if I were to ask you guys a question, tell me which one do you think is faster in execution? Think logically. Is a compiled language going to be faster in execution? Or is an interpreted language going to be faster in execution? I'll give you a moment to think about it. Those of you who would have thought logically would have arrived at the conclusion that 100% of compiled programming language is faster. Reason is very simple. The microprocessor who ultimately has to execute your program has access to all the instructions readily available. It doesn't have to wait. After the first instruction, second is available, third is available, fourth is available, fifth is available. All are readily available. Obviously, it will be faster. There is no delay. There is no waiting period. There is no lag. But if you shift your focus to interpretation, one thing becomes very, very clear to us is that interpreter, compile the, the, the microprocessor, please understand, has access to only one instruction at a time. It will execute it. But now it doesn't have access to the second instruction. It has to wait for the interpreter to convert it and give it. Because at any given point of time, it has access to only a single line. Naturally, in comparison, it will be slightly slower. And that is why I'm saying faster in execution, slower in execution. Now, my dear friends, now that you understood the difference between compilation and interpretation, please try to understand an example for a compiled programming language is C, is Java, is C++. An example for an interpreted programming language is Python, is JavaScript. I hope you're able to understand. Now, you understood how JavaScript works. Now, because JavaScript is interpreted, there is something unique we can do. What is that? Let me show you. In the last class, we understood the two approaches to convert from high level to machine level, okay? And one is called as compilation, another is called as interpretation. However, today I want to show you that JavaScript 100% is an interpreted programming language and hence JavaScript can be executed in two modes. One is known as script mode, another is known as interactive mode. Any uh, interpreted programming language will always have this facility of being executed in two modes, script and interactive. What is the meaning of this? I will show you. Don't worry about it. But if you remember, in the very first lecture of this series, I showed you that JavaScript is a programming language which was designed to execute inside a browser. Let us assume this is that Chrome browser. Now, all of you know that every browser has created their own engine to execute JavaScript and Chrome's JavaScript engine is called as a V8 engine which exists within Chrome. That is why within Chrome we were able to execute JavaScript. And if in case you want a quick refresher, I'm just taking you to Chrome. And now how do I access uh, or how do I type JavaScript within Chrome? It's very quite simple. You need to right click here and click on inspect. Once you click on inspect, this uh, developer console opens up about which more I will tell you later and you can see you have something called as console here and if you go here and you say 2 plus 2 it will give you 4 and that is JavaScript. If in case I want to print something uh, I will say console.log and here if in case I were to say hello and press enter you can see I got hello. So clearly without a doubt I think everybody understood that you can execute JavaScript within the browser right. So Chrome has V8 engine and inside that you can execute. But I don't want to type JavaScript inside a browser because as a programmer, we want to type JavaScript inside our own editors or IDEs. And the world's most popular editor which everybody uses for web development is called as VS Code. Now, how can I execute this inside VS Code? For example, like this, please try to understand. I want to be executing this inside uh, VS Code. This is VS Code. I want to be writing uh, code here and I want to be executing it. Don't worry about all this. I'll explain. Right? How are we going to now execute JavaScript outside of the browser? Very interesting thought, isn't it? Now, to give you more perspective, what long time back they did is, Somebody, I'll speak about this in detail when I uh, reach that uh, part of the JavaScript series, but please try to understand. Somebody had a brilliant idea. They're like, this V8 engine, which is inside Chrome, let us take it out of Chrome. Let's take only the V8 engine. 
and let's modify this V8 engine in such a manner that using it, we can execute JavaScript code outside of the browser because JavaScript is such a powerful language, it doesn't make any sense to keep it locked only inside the browser. And this V8 engine, which has been modified to execute JavaScript out of a browser is what you are calling as Node.js. I hope you will understand. So this is only Node.js. Now if you were to take Node.js and you were to install it in your computer, you can execute JavaScript inside VS Code also, inside any editor. Now you may ask, how do I install Node.js, etc. There is a PDF document attached to this. Please go and take a look at it. Step by step, I've given you instructions as to how you can be installing Node.js. Am I clear? Anyways, I have already installed Node.js in uh, my computer and hence it is also available for me to type in VS Code and let me just show you, okay? For example, this is VS Code. More about VS Code we will speak. So you can see there is a folder I've created called as JS Course. Inside that I've created exmp.js1 file. That file obviously will end with .js because .js is the extension. Why is it .js? Because what is there inside of this file? JavaScript code. Yes or no? Now you can see I have a simple thing, console.log hello. But this I'm not writing it inside the browser and I want the output to come here. So in VS Code, I have something called as a terminal. Similar to command prompt in Windows or terminal in Linux and Mac. Correct? Now see, I'll go here. And if you have successfully installed uh, Node.js, then one thing you can be doing is you can just go here and say Node. What is the command? Node. Space. Tell what is the file name? exmp.js. If I press enter, Node.js will go. Now convert uh, whatever I've written in high level to machine level and I will get my output like this. Hello. I hope you understood. Now please try to understand what you have now done is only in high file language called as script mode. Because a script is nothing but a file inside which you have some JavaScript code, that's it. So a script is a file inside which you have JavaScript code, right? And please try to understand, after writing the code, only then after finishing the complete program, only then I have executed it. Yes or no? For example, I can, in fact, I'll just go here. I'll clear the screen. I'll go and add one more line here, okay? I'll say console.log. And inside of this, I'll just tell 2 plus 2 like this, correct? Now, after which I will again say uh, console.log. And here again, I will say probably 2 into 2 like this, correct? Like this, I'm going to write my complete program. I'll write all, my full program, whatever I want to do. After I finish the complete program, in one shot, I'm going to go now and I'm going to tell node space exmp.js, right? Now what will happen? Interpreter will go, take the first line, execute, give you output. Take the second line, convert it into machine level, execute, give you output. Take the third line, convert it into machine level, execute and give you the output. And if in case I were to press enter, you can see hello and you have got 2 plus 2 is also 4, 2 into 2 is also 4. Understood? This is only called a script mode. However, think logically, I told you JavaScript is an interpreted language, which means there's one more way in which you can execute called as interactive mode. Watch this carefully. And uh, let me uh, do one thing. Let me move myself uh, away from the screen a little bit so that you can see me clearly in this case. Uh, right. So what I would like to just do here is let me move myself here. Right. Wonderful. Right. So I, I don't block your view. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is very, very simple, friends. Try to understand what I'm saying. Here, first and foremost, I'll just go and say node, but I'll not give it any script. Instead, I will just press enter. When I pressed enter, what you are seeing in front of you now is called as the interactive mode. Now, if in case I were to go here and say console.log, and if in case inside this I were to say hello, the moment I press enter, this one single line is taken, given to the interpreter, interpreter converts it into machine level and is given to the processor. Processor will execute, give me the output, now it will wait for me to type the second line. Now I can go here and say 2 plus 2 easily like this. And if I press enter, I'll get 4. Similarly, next I can say 2 into 2. 
So you can see, I type a line, I get the output. Then the, I type the next line, I get the output. Then I type the next line, I get the output. This facility is only and only available in such languages which are interpreted in nature, interpreted languages line by line conversion one line is converted executed then only next line is converted and executed same thing you can do in python also if in case there's anybody who's learned python you can agree with me on this right so i hope you understood what is meant by the script mode and interactive mode however in this course or in any real world development related to javascript 99 percent of the times we will be writing all our code inside a file which we call as a script and then executing the complete script. So it is usually script mode that we will be going for. Anyways, I hope all of you understood this. Now I'll catch you in the next topic.